is the media in place and ready? Here's two items we'd like to discuss this afternoon. And first of all, we thank everyone for being here. First is the announcement concerning Yogi and Jackie's Bar and Grill. We'd like to announce that unfortunately we had to revoke the liquor license of Yogi and Jackie's Bar and Grill. This is based upon several findings. One of which is that they did not have security cameras on their premises. Second of which, there were some irresponsible behaviors on the part of the owners when it came to detecting fighting situations and situations inside facilities. The third of which is the fact that as they were dealing with this entire situation, they clearly did not have a very good handle on the overall business of the establishment. So as we look at Yogi and Jackie's Bar and Grill and why we've done what we've done, it is with deep regret that we revoke the legal license due to the fact that we like to see business here in the city of East St. Louis. But we have to see that business being operated in a very responsible way. One of the other key factors is that we discovered that a 19-year-old young man had been on the premises during one of the incidents. That was on a Tuesday night. Here in the city of East St. Louis, for alcohol selling establishments, there shall be no one under the age of 21 on the premises while alcohol is being sold. All of those offenses led to the revocation of the liquor license. One of the things to recognize, as you've heard us say several times, on an offense that's the first time offense of a liquor selling establishment, there are three options that are maximum offenses, maximum penalties. The first of which is up to a $1,000 fine, up to a 30 day suspension, and revocation. In this case, because of the magnitude of the infraction and previous occurrences that have taken place in and around Yogi's Bar and Grill, we have chosen to revoke. On to the next topic, which is the response to Senator Durbin's visit yesterday here in the city of East St. Louis. First of all, for any media members, who think that today is the day that you're going to watch a mayor try to burn up a senator and criticize him and nail him to the cross? You might as well put down your pens and pack away your cameras and microphones. We won't do that. First of all, the city of East St. Louis under this administration has been one that truly believes in collaboration and partnership. The city of East St. Louis needs partnerships at every level. We need partnerships with state government, federal government, local governments, county governments. So this will not be the day that you hear Alvin Parks being overly critical of Senator Durbin just because we have a difference on a couple of matters. We believe in building bridges. We don't believe in burning them. As we look at another key reason that we will not even think of burning this bridge, you have to look at the senator and his status itself. First of all, Senator Durbin has been a senator from the United States of Illinois, right here from East St. Louis originally, and he's been a senator for 16 years. He is our senior senator, and he's the assistant majority whip of the United States Senate. So we must keep and build a better relationship with Senator Durbin. Thus, we will continue to stay on the high road and show the respect that he and the position are due. The city needs all that he could possibly do for East St. Louis and all that anybody could possibly do for East St. Louis. And we'll be encouraging him to do so. Again, we seek to build bridges, 
not burning them. There are some points of clarity that need to be addressed from yesterday. There were citizens who said, where is Mayor Parks and why is he not here? Mayor Parks wasn't invited. Mayor Parks was told that that event was for ministers only. I'm not a member of the clergy, so I chose not to attend based upon the fact that I had not been invited and that I'm not a member of the clergy. I believe in going where I'm asked to go. In fact, I think anyone can tell you, I will go to neighborhood meetings put together by a senior, neighborhood meetings put together by you, precinct commitment meetings, all kinds of neighborhood organization meetings. I will go anywhere that I'm at, but I won't go anywhere and feel as if I might be intruding upon a meeting. Therefore, I was not there. Number two, there was an official who was with Senator Durbin yesterday who said, we're not going anywhere. To that, we say, good. Because as much help as we can get in the city of East St. Louis, we encourage it to remain here. However, we need to have that help and assistance. For anybody who wants to do good business with the city of East St. Louis, we welcome them to do so. A third statement that was particularly troubling <clears throat> that Mayor Parks is liable for a homicide outside of club place because they should not have been open and because they were operating without a liquor license. First of all, for clarity's sake, there was no homicide outside of Love Place. On a second point, you do not have to have a liquor license to do business in this city. You need a business license, but not necessarily a liquor license. The third point, if there had been a major incident of violence, how am I liable for that? As if I ordered a homicide or pulled the trigger. Totally ridiculous statement. So I wanted to be clear. When I heard that, I said, are you kidding me? That an official in a highly appointed position or elected position would be making that kind of a ridiculous statement? The purpose of yesterday's meeting, from what we've been told, was that they wanted to hear from the ministers of the area. And I'm glad to see some of the pastors in this room as a part of this meeting. The question was, what do you want in your city, and how can the federal government help? That question was raised to the spiritual leaders of the community. Great question, because we've asked that question several times. I see some individuals who are here now who are part of a safety solutions network that we put together back in August of 2010, had all kinds of great ideas that were being discussed. And it's not just about safety, but it's how do we rebuild this community. One of the things that I want to point out is that we'll be in touch with many of those same pastors and many of you business leaders here about how we can address the same subject. Because one of the things that we need to do is have a comprehensive holistic approach to how we're going to rebuild East St. Louis. Not just city government. It's not just keeping the streets clean and the police and the firemen doing what they need to do. It's doing a few other things as well. So as we look at that kind of a question, we know the question is overdue, and we look forward to getting the responses from the New Salem Baptist District and any other pastors who happen to be in the area on yesterday. Now, before I get started on the city's wish list of what we can do, let me first of all be thankful and show gratitude for the, to the federal government for several items that they have addressed. Number one, for those who don't know, we have a beautiful new facility going up on 15th and Bowman called Jazz and Walter Circle. Jazz and Walter Circle is a state-of-the-art senior facility 
that it's a combination with commercial development as well. It's going to be something we'll be proud of for generations to come. That's a collaboration between the Housing Authority, the City of East St. Louis, and several other people, including many private investors. So we thank the federal government for its leadership in that effort. We also thank the federal government for the law enforcement support that's been brought about in large part due to the partnerships that have been established for, for years here in the city of East St. Louis. For many years, we have lent several of our officers to the Drug Enforcement Agency, to the U.S. Marshals team, to the FBI team, and to several other agencies that tie in with the federal government. That is many cases in exchange for making sure that when we need to put together a drug busting team, they can come in and sweep like they do with the wave team. For the wave team's participation and all the other law enforcement efforts that we have from the United States government, we are truly thankful and can't say thank you enough. They come in and do a wonderful job in conjunction with the East St. Louis Police Department. We also thank them for the beautiful buildings that are here in the city. The courthouse is beautiful. The post offices are very good places to go. Always safe and secure, usually well manicured. They are very good landlords here in the city, and we appreciate that. We also appreciate the fact this is something that some of you may not hear about that often, but behind the scenes it's a very important issue. The support in not forcing individuals to have mandatory flood insurance. There's a levy issue where they actually could have forced everyone west of Highway 157 to actually buy flood insurance. That's a huge savings not having to have that put in place. <coughs> now, on to the wish list. And it's not that much of a wish list, it's really a need list. It's not hard for me to identify places and things that we need from the federal government. First of all, we need help with securing industry and jobs in this community. We talk about how to stamp out crime. One of the best ways that you stamp out crime is you give a man or a woman a job. Give them an opportunity to go to work, which is just one reason that I have fought so ferociously for the entertainment industry and the packaged liquor industry in this city, because there are all kinds of jobs associated with it. Number two, we need funding for education to assist our K through 12 programs and to make sure that access to college education is really what it needs to be. We need to make it so that anyone who wants to go and get a two-year degree can do so practically free of charge. That's how important education is in 2012. It's no joke. There's no need to be out here if you don't have a high school diploma. And it's practically no need to be out here if you don't have something beyond high school. If that's the case, we need to put our money where the reality is. Fund educational opportunities. Number three, dollars, dollars, dollars for police protection. If you want to know how to help this city become safer, give us more police. There's nothing like police presence to help stamp out crime and individuals thinking about crime. On that point, we had on the table, as recently as November of 2011, an agreement with the East St. Louis Housing Authority for the Housing Authority to provide $378,000 per year for five police officers to be hired who do nothing but patrol in and around the Housing Authority properties. That agreement was all but signed, sealed, and delivered, and it just magically disappeared in November of 2011. So if you want to know what you can do for East St. Louis, 
help us to find some police on a long-term basis. I'll give you four and five as well. High-speed rail is a huge opportunity for this country, taking people between St. Louis and Chicago, and there could have been a stop right here in East St. Louis. That would have been another economic engine. It still can be if we have the support of our congressional and senatorial leaders. It's a federal government issue, but clearly it's a winning idea for East St. Louis and the region. And all of St. Clair County, by the way, would benefit from a high-speed rail stop here in East St. Louis. Last, Ann Rubin. The other day you asked me, Mayor, are you tired of talking about this issue? And I said, you know I'm not, but I'm getting real tired of talking about ma major situations. We are now majoring in the minors. This is a minor concept. We need to put all these great minds to work in how to generate some jobs, how to generate some industry, how to get some more police protection on the streets. Not what time does a packaged liquor store close? Not what time does a nightclub need to be closed? We're majoring in the minors and we need to stop it. We need to get off, get off the liquor industry, get off the liquor issue. Number one, the industry is not the problem. It is not the primary source of the crime in this city. Let's get real about a couple of points. The issues that lead to crime in this city especially violent crime in this city, are drugs, guns being in the hands of the wrong people, domestic issues, in many cases fueled by poverty, and the last of which is individuals who simply have beefs and vendettas with one another, who basically take the approach of wherever I see you, I'm getting you. I'm putting you to sleep wherever I see you, whether that's in front of a church, in front of a restaurant, in front of a synagogue, in front of a club, out in the park. They take the approach of wherever I see you, it's over. That has nothing to do with a club. It has nothing to do with a liquor store. Why kill an industry that supplies jobs? Just by a standing on your feet for a second, how many people in this room are employed by or own or work with a liquor selling establishment? Just by a stand on your feet. I point that out because I think in many cases what happens is we discuss businesses and oh they're just selling business, they're just selling liquor and they're just making money. But those are people also. Why add to the unemployment? Why increase the poverty rate? by shutting down a very vital industry for this city. We have to face it here in East St. Louis. We've been through a deindustrialization for about 50 years. There used to be the glass house, the packing houses. In fact, at one time, it was the number two packing house center in the entire country. We had all kinds of jobs on the railroad, rubber plants, steel foundries. That's not here. We're rebuilding, but it's not here at this point. So the industry that is here, we need to be making sure we stand with and support and make sure that everybody is as responsible 
and as healthy and as safe and as vibrant as they can be. That's what we need to be doing here in East St. Louis. Maybe at some point the liquor industry will be a lot less important, but that day is not here. That day is not in 2012. Hopefully, by 2015, it will be, but it's not today. Why create more empty buildings for somebody to simply be able to buy them up a little bit later and take over? Is that really the agenda? Again, what we need to be focused on is regulating and monitoring this industry, along with all other industries that operate here in the city. What we need to do is make sure that we are protecting our residents, our corporate citizens, our public entities, especially our children. We need to be protecting them with regard to this industry, and we need to be protecting our visitors who come here to enjoy themselves in the industry. Next step, I'm looking forward to having another meeting with Senator Durbin. I'm looking forward to meeting with the governor, the congressman, the state rep, the state senator, and anybody else. I was talking with a gentleman today, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm, I'm unable because of confidentiality and it just still needs to get the, the cat out of the bag again. But there is an industry that could come to this country, that could be based right here in St. Louis, that would be a game changer for the world, bringing with it so many jobs you wouldn't even know that there wasn't that industry before. It's a whole new ball game. <coughs> if we can bring the industry that we have in mind out. And Senator Durbin has one of the key votes from the federal government being able to support it. So we need to be encouraging Senator Durbin to work with us on bringing that industry. So I'll go back to point number one. We're not here to burn them. We're not here to do a slash and burn. We need Senator Durbin. We need all of our congressional leaders to make this happen. Because some of you have talked with me for a long time about how we bring jobs and industry to East St. Louis. This one idea is a total game changer. Number two, we need to show and discuss the city's economic development plan that we already have in place through Senator Durbin and others to get the support that we need from the federal government to help make it happen. Help in many cases is not necessarily additional money. I know some will say, well, Mayor, where's all this tax money going to come from? It's not all about tax money. In many cases, it's about helping those people who said, I want to make an investment, I need some place to make it, bring them here. East St. Louis is wide open for business because we're looking to generate industry. We're looking to generate jobs. Number three, the quick and easy way. Put back on the table the housing authority agreement that we had in place that would have been done in November 2011 Get it done by May, June at the latest, and bring five police officers to work right away. And let them patrol these streets of East St. Louis, primarily in and around the House and Authority properties. That's a no-brainer. There's no way that anybody can tell me we can't find $378,000 when, by the way, we get a whopping $5,000 per year for all the 2,000 housing authority units that our police officers have to patrol. Ladies and gentlemen, that's $2.50 per unit. $2.50 per unit is what we get from the housing authority to do all that our police officers and firefighters and public works employees and all the rest have to do. <coughs> that's a disgrace. And quite frankly, the city of East St. Louis had to originally sue to get any payment in lieu of taxes from the housing authority. So the fact that we get next to nothing says they should have plenty of money built up 
to provide $378,000 per year to help patrol. I got a, a list of statistics earlier today that showed all the issues that we face in the housing authority properties. Many of the homicides of this city over the last 10 to 12 years have taken place in and around the housing authority properties. Half of which are over in the John D. Shields. Half of which. So there's no way we should not be addressing this issue. Number four. There's a program called the Thomas Neighborhood Grant that's due in less than 30, in 90 days. We need to be seeking support from everybody involved to stand behind that and establish a Thomas Neighborhood right here in East St. Louis that makes for safe havens for our young people. That's something, Ms. Jackson, that you shared with me and I attended that meeting last week. Very promising program for East St. Louis. Everybody in the meeting agrees that it's a promising program for East St. Louis. Let's stand with it and make it happen. Last but not least is we need to get at least $100,000 right away to put some young people to work this summer. Critically important and it, it keeps going back to jobs, 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 especially for our young people. For right now, that's all we have concerning that. I promise that we would also discuss just a little bit about the city's progress and direction. From progress and, and direction standpoint, we have some brochures that we'd love to hand out to you. Just know that from a city government standpoint, our focuses are as follows. Number one, bringing about a clean city. Number two, safe streets. Three, newer sewers. By the way, look to have every sewer that needs to be repaired, repaired by December 2012. Number four, jobs, jobs, jobs. We've got a downtown development plan that has already been adopted by the city council. It's a wonderful plan. We now simply need to execute it. One of the ways that we execute it is by having individuals ready to make the investment to make East St. Louis a lively and wonderful place that we'd all like it to be. You've heard enough from me for right now. We open it up to the media first for any questions. I don't agree with that. And the reason I don't agree with that is the clubs are not the source of the crime. In many cases, the source of the crime is someplace else. Again, the drug activity that may be taking place creates a drug competition between two rivals who happen to be both selling drugs. In some cases, it's another kind of a beef or vendetta that just happens to arrive at the club. The key to the club situation is carefully monitoring and making sure that the clubs have the security that they are supposed to have. They all have the security regulations. Most of our clubs and establishments do an outstanding job providing the security that they are supposed to have. One of the other keys is providing as much law enforcement presence on the part of the city of East St. Louis as possible, which is just one of the reasons that we instituted the donation program a couple of weeks ago which has worked wonderfully well. It has allowed us to put several more officers on the street on Friday and Saturday night. The streets look safer simply because the logical, rational criminal is not going to go where they see the police. We have a few people who are not rational, but the rational criminal, the rational criminal is not going to go where they see the police. So no, I don't agree with that. And that's just a point that we have to continue to agree to disagree. But I'm very receptive. I'm very receptive to continuing to discuss how we can help make 
safety and security the top priority that we know it already is here in the city of East St. Louis. So Right. The, the one o'clock closing time at this point is not a realistically viable solution. What we've looked at is based upon the types of businesses that we have, you would automatically kill 10 businesses. Many of the businesses, some of whom are represented in this room at this point, have said to me time and again, Mayor, if you close at one o'clock, I might as well put a padlock on the door. 90% of my business, Mayor, comes after one o'clock. And what we have to think about is some reality. One of the realities that we face is that we have several individuals who work the second shift in the city. They work from three to 11, or they work until nine o'clock to get off schnooks and stop working at nine o'clock. They go home, shower up, or go to sleep for a couple of hours, shower up, and they get ready to enjoy themselves for the evening. They're not looking to have nothing to do when they get off work just because they work second shift. And that's just one of the reasons that reality says, let's make sure we do not shut down at one o'clock. Not at this time. Other questions from members of the media? Yes, Maria. But you are extending kind of an olive branch to him. Do you think you're going to be able to work together? Do you think that he'll work with you, even though you're so different on the closing time? Right, Maria, I will do everything I can to make sure we work together. Why? The city of East St. Louis needs several resources. I respect the man and the position. I respect the congressman, the other senator, and any other resources that can possibly help East St. Louis. We will look for compromises, we'll look for solutions, we'll look to make sure that we do come together for something that makes sense for the city of East St. Louis. What we are not looking to do at this time is create more unemployment and more poverty. I would venture to say in the industry that we're talking about, you have at least 400 part-time employees or full-time employees employed in the industry of entertainment and packaged liquor. With that said, we don't want to do anything to reduce the numbers of employees that we actually have at this point. It's not just about the money. Now, the money is important, but what is important also is the opportunity for young men and young women to be able to go to work and feed their families. There are many people who have put many children through college because of the entertainment industry. We need to be respectful of that. Other questions for members of the media? Right here, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Have you looked at uh, putting together a meeting to talk to some of the residents or basically all the residents? Not want to be identified. We want those Carolyn, what we have done in the past, and I don't know if you read the meeting that we had back on March 31st, 2009, where we had approximately 400 residents in the lobby of City Hall. And we've heard a lot. We've had a lot of varying opinions. Some said close them down at midnight. Some said leave them open as long as they can be open or as long as they would like to be open. And, and let me say a couple of points here, too, because there, there's a major misnomer. Oh, for a second. There's a major, a major misnomer. And that is, East St. Louis is open all night. Everybody's open all night. The reality is there are only 18 establishments that are actually open after 2 o'clock in the morning in this city. Only 18. Seven or six of those 18 close at 3 o'clock. The others, in many cases, most nights are not even open. They're not open. 
Nobody typically is open Sunday through Thursday. Some are not even open on Fridays. Saturday night is the big night. So we get this picture that East St. Louis is open all night, every night, and everybody's selling liquor, and everybody's just swinging car doors open, and horns are blowing all night, every night. That's not true. But the answer to your question is, we're always receptive from hearing from our residents. One of the things that we recognize, one of the things we recognize is that I report to the residents of East St. Louis. Those are the people who elected me and the other members of the city council. So I will always be receptive to discussions, receptive to any other input from over the phone, in a meeting, stopping me on the street, always receptive. That's not my question on there. That meeting was in 2009. What is the town meeting reached out to the residents of Lake? I do it every day. In terms of putting together a meeting, what I'm talking about? I do it every day. Next question. Next question from members of the media. You mentioned the business venture that you're hoping to attract in St. Louis, but at the same time, as you're probably aware, there's that countering image problem. And I guess part of it came out of Saturday Night Live last weekend that you had a chance to review. Can you address that? How do you go about rebuilding the city's image as far as the business community far beyond East St. Louis is concerned. You rebuild the city's image in two ways. You do it first of all with good deeds. And you have to do it with a series of good deeds. And as you've all heard in this room several times, one of the things to know is it takes 50 acts of goodness to establish a good reputation. It only takes one bad act all of a sudden create a bad reputation. So we have several good acts to keep establishing. Do good deeds. That's the first part of how you build an image. Second act, that you have to tell the story. There's a very positive story to tell here in East St. Louis, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you one of the more recent positive stories. And one of the things that I always like to point to about East St. Louis is the people at a real strength for East St. Louis. There's a young man named Terrell Johnson who graduated from East St. Louis Senior High School in 1981. Young man was the lead commander of the Navy SEAL unit that brought down Osama bin Laden. A lot of people don't even know that. But that's the kind of character, courage, wisdom, toughness that comes from East St. Louis. And we don't take all the credit as a city. Obviously, his mom and dad had a lot to do with putting that kind of courage in, along with the Navy of the United States. But that's just one more success story from East St. Louis. When we talk about East St. Louis, it's, of course, the patriotism that I just talked about. Let's go to the athletic field for just a second. Some in this room may not realize East St. Louis is the only city in the history of the state of Illinois athletics that has boys and girls championships in the same sport in the same year from the same school. The only one in the history, and it's happened four times. Nobody else. in the history of the state has even done it once. And here it's happened four times. We point to that when we talk about East St. Louis and the image that we have. We, as citizens of East St. Louis, need to do a better job serving as ambassadors of East St. Louis and its goodness. One of the other points East St. Louis, from a location standpoint, is second to none when it comes to undeveloped land in this community. We're talking about being right in the middle of a large economy on the planet, right in the middle of the Midwest, 
right in the middle of the St. Louis metropolitan area, with four interstate highways coming to and through East St. Louis, eight different rail lines coming to and through East St. Louis, four state highways coming to and through East St. Louis, and we've got a major body of land of water right there on our western bank called the Mississippi River that will feed you up to the Great Lakes, down to the Gulf of Mexico, and around the world. The opportunity for East St. Louis is absolutely unparalleled. We simply need the investment, and we will need the cooperation of our federal and state partners. Other questions? Sure, we will. I just want to make sure that we, we get any questions out there. And if you have questions, we do have some of the owners here who can answer their own questions. Eric? Mayor, even though that meeting was geared toward the clergy yesterday, in what way are you planning on partnering with them in order to make a difference in the community, as well as the uh, school system and the business owners? That's a great question, Eric, because one of the points that I want to remind everyone of is that St. Clair County at this point is going on a major health initiative we have some score raising to do. We've got to make our community a lot more healthy. We're going to be looking for the clergy, other spiritual leaders. We'll be looking for individuals who are involved in business, which is many in this room, school district, the park district, the township, the city, other officials, other community leaders to get involved with how we make East St. Louis more healthy. So going to your question, the clergy will be directly involved in that. In addition, we'll be looking for the, the, the clergy to join us in community building. Many of the ideas that Lauren shared with me earlier today that we've talked to the clergy about in the past, some of which we've executed, some of which we haven't, we need to revisit the topics. Now, now have you talked to them since yesterday as far as updating? Not where collectively. Mm -hmm. I've talked with some members of the clergy individually. Some of the leaders of that meeting yesterday, some of the individuals who were happy to be there, but we will get more information from them and let's see how we can tie it all together. Because we've got ideas that come from all places, especially some of the some of the brightest minds in this region happen to be East St. Louis pastors. So it wouldn't surprise me what new and bright and brilliant ideas come from our pastors. Carolyn? I just want to ask you last couple of days about, about keeping the club all the same from residents who are I can't. It's been varying. For the most part, the calls that I received said, Mayor, the clubs are not the problem. Mayor, liquor is not the problem. Mayor, stand your ground. Mayor, keep representing this community the way that you're representing it. Those are the calls that I received for the most part. Can I ask one? Yes. Yesterday, our office was inundated with calls regarding the meeting that was held at Mount Karen Church, and they were wanted to attend because they wanted their voices heard, and they were in support of the businesses remaining with their hours. So, thank you. Please let me repeat one other point. We're not saying that when a person has the opportunity to sell all night that they do. Again, most don't take that opportunity. Most leave by 4, 4.30, 5. In many cases, they never open. Some of our taverns close by 11. Some of our taverns close by 12. We're just talking about the maximum hours. Remember, as we look at a city, one of the things we look at is providing the opportunity for business to take place. We don't say to anybody, Hey, Mr. Williams, make sure you keep the club open at 6 o'clock in the morning. You say, Mr. Williams, you have the opportunity to, if you like, but you don't have to. We want to provide the opportunity. <laughs> I would like to open it up for members who are not media members to actually express themselves. I see our County Board of Review member Charlotte Moore is in the back of the room with the statement of our question. Yeah. Um, Mayor, I, I receive comments all the time. And as a citizen of East St. Louis and a taxpayer in this community, I resist the fact that the Senator 
coming down here. So I used to be at my town. What I need coming to the church is to buy some commitment. We haven't had a drink for so we were in real plenty when we got here. So coming down here talking about trying to tell us what he want us to do. Uh, 
Uh, with that being said, again, I thank you, Mayor, for standing up for us. Our letters will go out again, top of the week, to the senator to see if we can set up a meeting and bring him here to sit with us. Thank you very much for standing up. And by the way, let me say to you, especially members of the media, you may not know me as well. When I told you that I would stay on the high road and not go too low, one of the reasons that I will not do that is that I never want to embarrass the lady who just stood up. That's my mother. I never want to embarrass my mother, and I want to make my mother proud. $140,000 is only the tip of the iceberg of what these establishments generate with regard to taxes. First of all, that's not even a tax. Those are just the liquor license fees on an annual basis. Just the fees. There are four different types of taxes that get paid by way of the state of Illinois. Sales taxes, liquor taxes, utility taxes, and also income taxes as paid by employees who work for these establishments. Number two, there is a thing called property taxes that these buildings generate to get paid to St. Clair County and come back to the city of East St. Louis. Number three, there are local taxes that these establishments pay called food and beverage taxes and also packaged liquor taxes. Just for the first quarter alone for 2012, the city of East St. Louis is about to collect $41,000 just for the first quarter alone on food and beverage and packaged liquor taxes. So it's been very misleading to have individuals represent that only $140,000 comes from these establishments. Is that worth the life? Now, one point we want to make clear is that it's not about money versus life. Because if that question ever comes, the question is always going to be answered with, we will do what is ever necessary to protect life and liberty here in the city of East St. Louis. The health and safety of this community is at the very top of our priority list. But please understand that a big part of protecting the health and safety of the community comes because of revenue. You've got to have revenue generated to pay the police department, revenue generated to pay the fire department, revenue generated to pay the emergency services department and public works. It takes money to operate a city. This is why, as respectfully as I can, when I hear certain individuals saying, Mayor, just shut it down, I want to ask them, where is that roughly $1 million going to come from? You know that a million dollars pays for about 17 police officers in this city? Where does that money come from if you simply cut the industry out? If somebody has an answer, maybe we'll consider. Until then, let's not continue focusing on something that really doesn't make a lot of sense. The first part of your question, you asked the first part of your question, Let, let's talk about that. One of the things that was brought in recent discussions 
is if we're going to shut down East St. Louis, what are you going to do about the rest of the communities around here? Centerville was open all night. Sojay was open all night. Brooklyn and Washington Park who were open all night and absolutely rely on those industries, in some cases almost exclusively for revenue. And then, if it's good for East St. Louis, why isn't it good for the rest of the state? Let's just have a statewide ban and shut down all liquor sales at 11 o'clock p.m. Let's see what the mayor of Chicago would tell you, or Peoria, or Metropolis, which has a casino, or Peoria, which has a casino. Let's see what those other communities would tell you about shutting down the sales of alcohol at 11 o'clock. In some cases, they'd be run out on a rail. They wouldn't even get in the city limits with that discussion. You wouldn't even get north of I-80 with that kind of a discussion, going toward Chicago, talking about shutting down sales. So why here in East St. Louis? Is there another motive? Yes. Yes. Okay. Other questions, other comments? Of course. Um, since you all said that a lot of the deaths and crimes or whatever are not focused in on the clubs, has anybody done a study to, to show where the crimes are happening and focus in on that community and the people that are there to minimize the crime? We have Chief Corey and his police department have all kinds of statistics. Mm -hmm. Francella Jackson, who used to be an employee of the police department, shares the statistics. There are all kinds of statistics that will map out and plan exactly where the crime is taking place. It's plotted extremely well. One of the high concentration areas, quite frankly, is the House and Authority properties. Just between 2000 and 2011, there were 270 homicides in or around the John De Shields. And it's not just about homicides, there are other crimes as well. But it's no secret that much of the concentration has been in and around House and Authority properties. Now with that said, does that make those bad? No, it just makes those areas that we need to focus on a lot more. That's why we need to put it right back on the table the House and Authority Agreement that says let's pay for five police officers, and five is the minimum. We really need about 12 to 15 to run about a 16-hour shift seven days a week in and around the House and Authority properties. And that's still kind of bare bones. So we need that, that agreement right back on the table for the city of East St. Louis. I mentioned that because when he came down here, uh, Senator Durbin came down here before this meeting here, he was standing with the Housing Authority Executive Director talking about getting, you know, IDs and more lighting and uh, having a, a co it was coordinator for security and fencing, you know. And, I mean, why isn't that, you know, the uh, East St. Louis Housing Authority put on the table like the city of East St. Louis as far as protecting the community and uh, uh, telling their uh, residents to be more safe or community oriented. Well, let, let me first point out all of those measures that you just mentioned are very good measures mm -hmm. and we as a city are appreciative of those measures. Mm -hmm. We need the fencing, mm -hmm. the cameras, the lighting, mm -hmm. the security coordinator should definitely be helpful. But there's nothing like here is a police officer that is patrolling the area. See, a camera is not going to do anything about disturbance at some apartment in the John DeShields. Shields. It's not going to do anything about fight in progress, subject removal requested at some apartment in the Roosevelt homes. Because it's happening inside. You need police on the ground that can get there quickly and show the presence, again, in people's minds, this is not the place to conduct a crime. Other questions? Are we just about ready to wrap it up? Maria? I, that's exactly what you're talking about. We were told by the housing authority that they decided instead of putting that money into the police department that they wanted to bring cameras, lighting, and fencing. Why they pulled it off the table, 
I don't fully know. It somehow magically disappeared. So there is no writing in the No, it's on the way. It's on the way. It just hasn't been put in place yet. We have some suspicions of what actually happened. Really, it's not much of a coincidence, in my opinion, that three weeks prior to it being pulled off the table, Senator Durbin expressed some frustration with my unwillingness to shut down the liquor selling hours. And he basically said, I wouldn't support more money for the police department at all if you continue to keep those long hours. And all of a sudden, three weeks later, the agreement was pulled off the table. But now with that said, very important to note, we are still very much willing to work with Senator Durbin, along with anybody else who wants to work with and for the city. We're not saying at all, this puts us in an unmovable position, this puts us in a totally uncooperative position. We're looking for ways to make sure that East St. Louis is as healthy and as safe as possible. And those were federal dollars. Yeah. Those were federal dollars. And practically everything that is, that is associated with the housing authority is federal in nature. Those are federal dollars that we were hoping to bridge that gap between law enforcement needed and law enforcement provided. Especially considering that the city of East St. Louis receives a whopping $5,000 per year to cover 2,000 housing authority properties. That's almost criminal. <laughs> 